Vital Vital Podcast. Lift off when the clock has started. Bang bang, we back knowing by podcast season two, the level up episode forty nine. Uh, fresh from, I guess you could say, a vacation. You know, I mean, it wasn't exactly a planned vacation. You know, I, I, I wasn't out. We didn't have an episode last week, and if we did, we'd be at episode fifty. And it's not like I was out. You know what I'm saying? Fucking cruising the waters of fucking Lake Minnetonka or whatever the fuck. I wasn't. It wasn't exactly a vacation that I wanted, bro. It was. Um, your boy caught the Rona. Keep it 1,000 with y'all. That's why there ain't even nobody in here while I'm doing this podcast. No guests this week or nothing. And your boy caught the Rona. And I'm okay now. You know what I'm saying? But just to play things cool, I didn't want to have nobody in the crib. I didn't want to have Patty or, or Ann or anybody in the in the spot. So just because I, I wanted to make sure that I was totally 100%, you know, um, not fucking contagious, I guess you could say. And, um, you know, just to play it safe, man. I'm not one of these reckless motherfuckers out here get the Rona and they just running around all over the place and shit. Now, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can say what you want to say, but I know I know some of y'all out there. I, I mean, I ain't here to say names, so you ain't got to worry about me. I'm just saying, you know. But um, I couldn't tell you where I got it from. I couldn't tell you who gave it to me or not. You know, just I just know that me and my whole household, we... We uh, caught it and we caught it bad. It was it was pretty bad. None of us are um, vaccinated, and that's by choice, you know, as it should be, as should it always be. And then I'm not saying that it's gonna stay like that. Like me getting it ain't ain't um, me getting it ain't fucking ain't changed my mind about nothing. It's not because I mean we went through it. we went through it for like about a good five days, just going through it in and out. It comes in, it comes and goes, and it's just a shitty feeling. I I liken it to the worst fucking hangover I ever had in my fucking life. You know what I'm saying? But I, I got it. It's it's weird in a way because I feel like I'm a part of a, a fraternity now. Cause I know hella motherfuckers that done had it and they're okay and everything's good. I mean, I can't say what they're like at home or their home life is like, but um, on the surface at least they seem good. But uh, yeah, it's real. Um, Whatever you want to call it, some people want to, you know, they're on the conspiracy hype when it comes to this shit. I don't doubt that it's real. I used to doubt that it was real until it started getting closer and closer to home. And then when it got, when I knew people and I knew family members that really got it and they're like really going through it, then I knew. Because I I mean, I come from a strong family. We not to run to the hospital for every little fucking boo-boo type bunch. You know what I'm saying? We, for the most part, if something happens to us, we try to take care of ourselves first before we have to go to the hospital or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? So that's how we were raised. You know what I mean? Can we, are we going, but did we die though is the question, right? So, um, yeah, it, it, it was no fucking joke. Corona, no joke. I could see why older elderly people have issues with it or people with uh, health concerns. So, you know, I just, my whole thing is just everybody. I know that they're, they're, people are politicizing the masks and the whole situation like that and the, the and the and the what's it called? They're politicizing the shot, which I don't trust the shot still. Y'all already know my stance on it. There's just not enough data for me to be out there and want to go run and, and poke myself with it, especially since they already know that whether you have the shot or not, you can still catch it. And I am proof that I didn't have the shot. I caught Corona and I you could make it through. Some people might be more susceptible than others, but I don't want I don't want to hear that bullshit they're talking about. Oh, it, it, you you you're going to catch a severe form the Delta variant and all this and you could die type shit. We were nowhere near death. We felt like we were dying, but we definitely weren't near death. You dig what I'm saying? So that doesn't change the fact that it's a real thing. That doesn't change the fact that you could still get your grandma your, 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 your uncle and somebody you love, somebody with a, with a heart complications and other things that doesn't change that you could still get them sick, you know? So I, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a, you know me, you know, the podcast already. I'm not, I, I try to stay for the people, by the people, but at the very least, at the very least, wear your mask. Stop acting like uh, you're too good for the mask or it's infringing on your fucking freedoms and shit, because that's bullshit. 
Okay, don't hit me with the pseudoscience talking about, oh, we're supposed to have germs. and You know, this is going to happen. Don't hit me with the Facebook videos and all that shit. Fuck all that. Because the fact of the matter is the shit's real. It's spreading. It could kill people, period. Okay, and the pseudoscience and all that bullshit. I don't want to hear that because you know what? For years, I'm going I'm to go ahead and even say decades. China has been working around. They've been wearing masks in a lot of Asian countries that are highly densely populated been wearing masks even their kids and they're fine okay so don't tell and don't give me that this is america and uh you know we function different out here like nah 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 if we're, if we're gonna be common sense people at least have that common sense for you am i telling you not to live your life no am i telling you that you have to fucking go get a go get a fucking vaccine and all this other shit no that's not me for me to tell anybody that's a personal choice and that's how shit always stands just like uh, the abortions and, and abortion bills, I'm all I, I, I'm all for women having the right to choose. It's their body, period. Now, whether, wh- whether you know, whatever the reason, or the circumstances is why you're getting rid of it, it's your choice. I would just hope that people would make better decisions and not just be a freaking, uh, what do you call that? Uh a motherfucking abortion factory. You dig what I'm saying? But even then, I can't tell you what to do. It's your body. You do what you want to do. But you, for God's sakes, if you know you don't want to kill, man, put a fucking condom on. You know what I mean? Do your best. You know, I, you know, I'm, I, I could see, I could see why women, you know, have it so hard because you got all these motherfuckers over here making decisions for you, and I'm not one of them. I'm not going to sit here and make a decision for you about that. I'm not going to tell you to go get a shot. I'm not going to tell you none of that. I think that's a personal choice. And I'm not going to tell you not to. Like I said, it's a personal choice. And if you feel like that that's what you want to do, then you go ahead and do that and, 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 and take care of it and handle your business. But for me, I know what I prefer. I know what I've been through. I could only speak from experience. And I'm okay. I'm alive. Obviously. You know, um, I, I, I do take it seriously. So when I say that stuff, I'm not trying to be funny. Far from it, because I know people that have lost people. I know people that personally that have been sick and been fighting it. And they didn't have, they, didn't, they weren't as lucky as me. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, as much as I'd say, don't fucking this, don't do that. You know what I mean? The, the fact of the matter is, is that I caught it and... You know, I'm very lucky to be alive, I could say that. You know what I mean? Because you never know. Like they say, you never know how this, how your body will take it or react to it. So, um, you know, shout out to everybody. Shout out to all the healthcare workers. I mean, putting a fucking mask off doesn't hurt you. All you motherfuckers talking about, take the shot because of this and that. Don't give me that fucking bullshit neither because the shot don't work. The shot does not work, okay? I know people personally that got the shot. You know what I mean? And still caught it and caught the bad hand, caught the business of it at that. Almost died themselves. So I don't I don't know I don't know how to best to explain it. Like I said, I'm not here to tell you what it is or what it ain't. I could only tell you from my personal opinion. And that's it. You know, I'm better now, I'm good. You know, um, and um we're gonna keep it rolling. We're gonna jump up into the here and now. Uh, we're going to talk about a few topics here and now. It's just a segment of the uh, podcast where we talk about whatever, you know what I mean? We get on here and talk our shit, give our opinion. Since it's just me today, like I said, you're just going to have to deal with the rant style, fucking, you know, the podcasting shit. And so here it is. You know what I'm saying? So um, what's it called? We're going to go ahead and start off with the Federal Trade Commission is investigating McDonald's for all the broken McFlurry machines. Now, in, 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 a, in a sense, in a way, I understand it. I get it. You know what I'm saying? Because the motherfuckers are always broken and they never really got an excuse for us. They're, they're, you know what I mean? And, and at the same time, I don't think that it, it, it's the McDonald's workers fucking, fucking it off or just saying that it don't work. And maybe it is. Maybe a lot of them are like, fuck that. We're known for the broken machine. We just going to rock with it. So we ain't got a, one less thing to deal with. But uh, when I when I heard about this story and I heard that they're investigating them because of that, I thought about this. I'm like, yo, these motherfuckers ain't got shit to do. These motherfuckers ain't got shit to do or the motherfucker calling the shots at the Federal Trade Commission is some obese, fucking fat, scumbag, jelly roll bag of shit that's like 
uh, let's, uh, every time I send my, I, my assistant out there to get me a McFlurry, the machine's always broken. Someone must do something about this. Uh, that's my best fat, greasy, waste of space fucking voice that I can make. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand. I, I, I really feel like that's taxpayer money going to waste. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure that they could fuck around and use that money for something else. I don't know what the fuck made them think that we give a fuck that much about the McDonald's McFlurry. But then again, some people do. Some people want to know. You know what I'm saying? I just didn't know that the Federal Trade Commission, um, it was their business to go in and fucking investigate and spend all that good fucking money on... Um, on fucking, you know what I'm saying? On investigating whether or not these McFlurry machines work. But that's not here nor there. Fuck them. It is what it is. If your fucking heart gets to pump in too fast because of that shit, then I don't know what to tell you. Um, maybe, maybe you need to leave McDonald's alone. It's, that might be the first thing, you know what I'm saying? If you really that that pumped up about it. But yeah, so it is what it is. Going to move on to the next one. Uh, the... MTV Music Awards are going on right now as we speak. Well, as I'm recording this, by the time that the people get this, it'll be out already. It had been out. Some of the people that, um, what's it called, won. I mean, I don't, to be honest with you, first of all, I don't really fuck with the MTV Music Awards anymore. I don't really feel like MTV uh, has any place to be picking music when they don't even fucking play music anymore. So... I don't, you know, I, I used to, I used to be down with MTV. I'm part of the MTV generation, but y'all got me fucked up first of all because you guys don't even fucking play music anymore. So who the fuck is picking picking these awards? You dig what I'm saying? Second of all, it's all really hype. You know, it's. I'm sorry, but YouTube and everything and killed the game, then changed everything, and and no one really, no one gives a fuck about that no more. No one gives a fuck about the awards. I mean, people do. Don't get me wrong. I'm saying my opinion on this. And, and I could ask and talk to or reach out to a handful of people within my ecosystem and shit, and they'll probably tell you the same fucking thing. They're like, fuck this. What, what the fuck is the point of this shit? But, I mean, some people, obviously, there's still a motherfucking, uh, there's still some kind of um, ne uh, demand for it, I guess, but I'm just not into the whole MTV things. But that doesn't mean that y'all ain't into this shit, so I'll give y'all a quick little something-something and let you know about this bullshit real quick. So... Uh, best out, best video of the year, Little Nas X, uh, Montero. You guys already know how I feel about this shit. It's just ridiculous. It's all for clout. You know what I mean? That's another reason why MTV probably fucking, uh, you know, gave them the fucking video of the of the uh, of the year. You know, shit, motherfuckers nowadays. It's less about the music and more about the hype. What kind of hype? What kind of bullshit can you put behind it? How much noise can you make, good or bad, behind it? How much of a, of a footprint on, on, on uh, society can you make when you deliver shit? So being that that shit is what it is like that, that's why you get shit like this in the forefront. Because it's shocking. People ain't ready for it. And it sells fucking records, I guess, or whatever. We don't even sell records. It gets you streams. I don't even know what the fuck, you know, when it comes to that, because we've already talked about it on the podcast, and when it comes to streaming, the artist doesn't get their fair share as it is. So uh, we'll leave it at that. Uh, Silk Sonic, uh, what's it called? One Best Male R&B for Leave the Door Open. Um, I don't really listen to Bruno Mars a lot. He's kind of annoying. His voice annoys me. I know that's probably a hot take. I'm not saying that he's not talented or he's not dope, but his voice is definitely fucking annoying to me. And what's it called? Um, I just don't, I just don't dig it, man. I'm good. You know what I mean? Uh, the other guy, I forgot his fucking name. I always forget it. The other guy in the group is dope, though. I, I fuck with him. Um, so you know, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? There's, a, there's a lot of other shit. To be honest with you. If you want to know all that, you probably done seen this shit already on your fucking social media. You don't need me to tell you. I'm just giving you my my little, um, I'm giving you my take on it. Yeah, and I mean, once again, my take is not exactly, I'm not saying it's law. I'm not running and foaming at the mouth and getting mad because people like these artists. People, uh, there's obviously, a, there's obviously, you know, um, a uh, audience for this type of thing, so... I mean, more power to them. Get your money, man. You know what I'm saying? I can't never knock nobody's hustle or what they're doing. 
But at the same time, it just when it ain't for me, it ain't for me. I bring it to y'all because I just say not just about me. It's not just a rant. You know, I gotta give y'all the news and give y'all my take on shit because everybody want to know uh, what my opinion is on certain things and when they ask me. So that was one of them. All right, we're gonna keep it going. We got the little Boosie biopic coming soon. Uh, he dropped the trailer. It looks filmed really nice. It looks like he spent some money on it, but this is the problem that I have with it. I don't like biopic films with bad acting. Biopic films with bad acting to me is a pet peeve of mine. Now, they already fucking destroyed my Tupac movie. That shit was fucking garbage. I watched it and I watched it over and over again. The more that I fucking watch it, the more that it fucking bothers me that they put out that piece of trash and try to call it um, a real biopic. I, I, I don't like the person that, that, that directed it because I felt like he was just shooting all his partners, these little fucking, uh, here, bro, go, you want to be in the movie? He put Mano in it and he put all these other motherfuckers that can't act for shit in key roles, though. A motherfucker's going to be the dude that shot Pac and robbed him and shit. Can you at least put a motherfucker that's convincing? You dig what I'm saying? The motherfuckers that robbed Pac, trash. That shit was whack as fuck. I was mad. When I when I left out of watching that two, the Tupac movie, the All Eyes on Me movie, I was like, yo, this shit mad disrespectful. I like Pac. Pac is either in Cuba, rolling around on the beach, fucking mad as fuck, or Pac is on... In his, in his fucking, wherever he's at, rolling over in his fucking grave. So the same thing with the Biggie movie. This shit was whack. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I don't care how much memories you got attached to it. That shit was whack as fuck. You know? So, being that, I don't like it when... Uh, I didn't like also a part of the Tupac movie. I didn't like the fact that um, he had some of the outlaws playing themselves... And see, the reason for that is because of like this. When you do a movie, a show, or any kind of drama play or anything else, there's a thing called the suspension of disbelief. And what that is is basically the story is supposed to fool you enough for you for that split second to forget that it's not real life. And that's how it draws you in. And a lot of things that will pull the suspension of disbelief or yank you out of believing that is bad acting. <laughs> that's fucking foul, yo. Uh, that's crazy. That's that. That's that's. Uh, you better you better ch sit them down when they're old enough. Put eye, all eyes on me in front of them and explain to them that Pac was uh, Pac was not white. Anyways, so I, we got the live everybody. So if you you know what I mean for the people that are just listening to the audio later on, if you wonder why I'm stopping and, and saying things and laughing, it's because I got the live on there and the live is obviously chiming in. So I, I acknowledge them. But uh, the suspension of disbelief. So. Bad acting, uh, bad uh, storylines, bad special effects, things like that will fuck a movie up. And, and that's why you can't get into it because they can't pull you in long enough. Well, when they're pulling you in, something comes along and reminds you that not only is this a movie, but it's a bad fucking movie. And that's what happened with the fucking, with the All Eyes On Me shit. So I was very, very disappointed in that movie. And then... Uh, the thing that I have a problem with the boozy biopic, like, like I'm all for it. That's to me, that's kind of like my favorite type of movie right now. I, I love watching movies of all kinds of artists. It don't matter rock, rap, whatever. I like watching the movies of them and their come up. You know, I want to know all the shit that I don't know. We know the music, obviously, because if you have a biopic made of your of yourself when it comes to music or something else, not not only just music but art, you know, we we know the music. We want to know the shit behind it. What the fuck made it? made you how did what kind of frame of mind was this person to get to that point what i don't like like i said from the boozy thing and the thing i think is he plays himself at one point at least that's what i got from the from the uh the the clip that they put out he plays himself the problem is is like this that could go really good or really bad because some people could play themselves. They could just react like they normally would react. They could say the shit that they, you know, and, and they could play themselves in the movie and it's cool. You know, you believe them because they know their role and shit and they know when to react how. But if he's going to play himself, he better knock it out the park because that right there alone will fuck the whole movie up. 
if he doesn't fucking if he isn't believable if he can't fucking if he can't pull off certain roles and shit like like don't give me a fucking a scene where boozy's supposed to cry and he fake crying and he's making an ugly cry and shit don't i'm good i'll turn that motherfucker off i'm tired of them disrespecting fucking these these rap movies and and doing cheap shit like i like don't get me wrong i like straight out of compton it wasn't super uh, factually accurate, like they said. You know, a lot of it wasn't, but it was still a good fucking. It's still a good, a good movie, and that's important. We know, we know shit. We know already, kind of the history. If you follow these people, but was it acted well? Was the storyline good? Was it believable? Like all that shit, you know, it 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 was good. Like I said, the Pac movie, trash. The Biggie movie, trash as fuck. Them shits look like a fucking after school special or like, you know what I'm saying? A Nickelodeon fucking, uh, a Nickelodeon fucking show. You dig with us? I was mad, bro. That shit had me so hot. But, um, yeah, the movie, I'm, 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 I'm fucking with it. I'm, of course, I'm gonna watch it. I'll probably watch it on the bootleg site though, just because, just because Boozy is fucking acting in it. And like I said, I, he not known for acting and I'm not hating, but I'm just being real. He not known for acting. So, yeah. I would have rather him hired somebody to play him to be real with you because it's kind of real hard to, it's going to be real hard to get that suspension of disbelief going where I believe this story and I believe and I'm submerged in this world that he's painting for me because he's going to be there man you know what I'm saying and I am like bro I don't know if this motherfucker's for real or not you know I don't, I'm not I, I, I don't know what his acting chops are now look can it be done yeah I mean Cube did it he did Boys in the Hood it wasn't too much of a stretch from what his real life was, so he was able to kill it. But I'm hoping that's the case, the best case scenario. I'm tired of them disrespecting these rap movies. What else? There's a, there's all kinds of movies, man. I swear, I was like, I, I just, it just, just, it just fucking foul. You know what I mean? So, anyways, we're gonna keep y'all posted on that. We'll we'll figure it out as it goes along. Uh, last but not least, on the here and now, we're gonna talk about Michael K. Williams passing away from fentanyl overdose. And um, this shit's sad as fuck. Uh, unfortunately, everybody knows somebody damn near nowadays that's probably passed, that's probably fucking OD'd on some, some, some fentanyl. Putting stupid shit in their mouth and the fake pills and all the bullshit the motherfuckers be consuming. You don't know what you're putting in your body, man. And it don't matter if you got money, been on TV, all kinds of shows, the whole shit. It could happen to you, you know? Uh, everybody that I know, stop putting powder in your nose. If you put powder in your nose, if you're taking fucking fake pills and Xannies and all that shit, stop doing that shit. Um, take care of yourselves because the shit is real out there. And it, it, like I said, it doesn't, when it comes to OD, it, it could be anybody. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how young, how old, how strong, how much money. It doesn't, none of that shit matters. You know what I mean? If you get the, you get the wrong shit at the wrong time, it's a wrap. You know, it's a wrap. And, and guess what? There ain't no coming back from that. You know what I mean? There's a lot of shit. You can make mistakes in this world and you can have a chance to get, to redeem yourself or a chance to make it better, but that's not one of them. So, uh, rest in peace, Michael K. Williams, dope actor. He was actually a really dope actor. I kind of, I like, um, the movies that he was in and, um, it's just another lesson learned, y'all. I mean, we could go, we could go bar for bar. Mac Miller, uh, Tom Petty. I mean, fentanyl. If this was, if this was a rap battle, fentanyl is like the Eminem of this shit. Cause his body and it's catching everybody that it that it bodies is catching everybody. Ain't nobody catching too much of a fade with him and winning. Michael Jackson. Let let's keep it going. I mean, we could go. We could y'all could fill up my comments with this shit, but. You know, no one, no one listens to us too late or until it touches you or until it touches someone you know. So uh, this is me saying to you, don't fuck with it. And that's basically also going to be the no invite PSA. Stop putting stupid shit in your nose. Stop eating fake pills. Stop doing all that shit. Leave that shit alone. Michael K. Williams, motherfucking Michael Jackson, Tom Petty, Mac Miller, all these people... Overdose, OD'd, OD'd, and, and and I'm not I'm not even sure if all of it's fentanyl. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's all that it was all from fentanyl, but 
the 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 fact of the matter is that an OD is a fucking OD. Period. You know what I mean? You you if you don't catch it, if nobody's around you, if you're not that lucky blessed one that had somebody with you, it's a wrap for you. So please leave the bullshit alone. Stop putting tooting shit in your nose. You know, go and make your money if you're gonna make your money. Do what you gotta do. But smoke weed, man. Shit, fuck it. Smoke weed. There's mushrooms. There's all kinds of shit you could be doing besides uh, doing powder and popping fake pills that you know goddamn well you did not get from the motherfucking pharmacy. But uh, this is the Known Vibe Podcast. That's the here and now. We're going to keep it moving and grooving like we always do. Going to take a quick break. I'll be back in a second. We'll continue the podcast. <laughs> Bang, we back. Known Vibe Podcast Season 2. Uh, episode 49 The level up You know what I mean This will be doing This whole season and Hard to hard to believe it But we've been coming um, We're coming around On a year With that being said We're gonna jump Into the segment Called put you up on game Where we're basically We Make any announcements You know what I mean uh, And since it's just me Right now I'm gonna be the only one Making the fucking announcements But um, I got I got a lot of shit on the table, you know what I mean. I, I I'm not I'm I'm even though I'm not the announcement type, I'm only uh, and I've been said that it's kind of like a, a thing of mine. It's like I, I like to show my work instead of just telling people and telling people and telling people and telling people and beating them over the head, constantly talking about, you know what I mean. Oh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. That's not never been me. I'm more of the you see my work type motherfucker. That's the best way I could describe it. You see my work. You see me working. You see my work. You see what it is. So that's that's always been me. Now, obviously, for podcasting reasons, we created this um, uh, segment so that we could give y'all basically some heads up on some things that we do got going on. So for me, even though it's, it might seem contradictory to what I, what I do, all the stuff that I talk about right here are things that are already in play, already in motion. So with that being said... We got OBB Half's official debut project dropping real soon, sooner than you think. You're going to wake up one day, it's going to be outside your door like that crazy ex. You know, the only difference is it's going to be a welcome site. You're going to go to your Spotify or to your motherfucking, um, or to whatever your favorite streaming platform is, and it's going to boop, it's going to pop up. OBB Half's. Official solo album 182A on Rebirth Entertainment coming soon. So bet, bet your bottom dollar, bet your last buck that this shit is slap and it will be official and it will be out there. So keep that in mind. Um, also, uh, we got a joint project with me and the fellas, Noisemaker Chin Chin, uh, Zeke from Ugly Rogue Records. Uh, my, my brothers, man, the best way I could tell you, those are my bros, like, for real, we was all locked up, incarcerated together, making music, beating on our chest, writing in our little rhyme books and shit, and our, and, um, we always said when we come home, we gonna get it cracking for ourselves, and that's what we did, basically, you know what I'm saying, we got it cracking, and, uh, we, you know, we got a, we got a little project we putting together. We've been made music before. We got countless songs. You, you can find us all over, uh, Noisemaker Chin Chin's, uh, last two EPs or last two albums. Uh, so, you know, it's some fire. Like I said, my, my guy, he sings, he not a rapper. I'm the rapper. You know, I'm the rapper. Me and, me and Zeke are the rappers, but Zeke sings too. You feel me? And who knows? <laughs> Your boy might dust off the motherfucking vocals for one of these songs. You never know. But, um, yeah, it's going to be dope. Keep an eye out for that. Um, also, the, a major announcement. We're coming around in a year of the No Invite Podcast Season 2. So what does that mean? That means we're jumping into Season 3, y'all. Season 3 officially begins in October. So be on the lookout for Season 3 in October. It's going to be more of the same. But a lot of new shit too because we're gonna switch it up. You know, we always gotta come anew. If this season was the level up, I can't tell you what the next season's gonna be called, but just know that we 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 are always and forever leveling up when it comes to this music, this podcast, this content, this what the fuck we do. And just know that it's been a year. And I think there's 52 weeks in a year, I'm not sure, something like that. But by the time we're done, it'll be like maybe 51. 51 weeks, 51 episodes, so, I mean, hey, you know, we, 
We consistency. You know, we uh, yeah. You know, don't don't be mad at us, ladies, if we're more consistent than your man is. You know what I'm saying? Any motherfucker might see you once a week. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you might not even be the main one, but just know that with us, baby, you're always the main. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, so so with the podcast, you don't never gotta worry about getting and you know once a week we dropping that dick off like 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 you know what I'm saying clockwork. So don't 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 hate a player, hate yourself. Anyways, that's the here and now. It's your boy, you know. I'm 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 trying to be easy. I'm not I'm trying to not get on my rant shit, you know. I'm trying to be um I don't know, I'm just trying to give you some content, y'all. You know what I mean? Life's crazy, life moves fast. Uh, I, I, like I've lost a lot of people in my life. I've lost a lot of people, um, recently, you know what I mean? And it's fucking foul, you know, we, we, we gotta be happy, man. The world is a crazy place. So I'm just trying to give y'all something to take your mind off of for a little bit, a little bit. You know, we all got to go deal with the bullshit regardless at the end of the day, once you put this mic, this podcast down, I put this mic down, we all got to go deal with the bullshit some way, somehow. So you know, I'm just trying to give y'all a little something, you know what I mean, to keep your mind off it and shit. But we're going to go ahead and jump into the main topic. And the main topic is, is I've seen this uh, debate going on in Twitter. And, and not only Twitter, but on social media. And I, I, to be honest with you, it boggles my fucking mind why it's even a debate. And uh, I could tell now why a lot of you will never fucking be millionaires neither. Okay, so there's been a, there's been a debate going on on social media, and where they're talking about, um, would you rather have five hundred thousand dollars or dinner with Jay Z? And if you're fucking have any kind of sense in your fucking head, you would take the money. And the reason why you take the money, because we're going to go based off the question. We're not adding extras to it. We're not adding expectations or what you think somebody's going to tell you on, on dinner. Because the fact of the matter is this. What's going to have a more immediate impact on your life? Sitting down with Jay-Z? Eating, eating scrimps and, and scallopinis, man. And you know what I'm talking about? You think you think he's gonna sit there and run you his whole game plan? Even if he does, are you telling me that you're gonna be able to retain all that? You're gonna retain all that information that he's given you in a sit down. You know, so uh, that that's what I'm saying. It's like people that said, "Oh, well, he's a mentor." You don't know how valuable that is, my guy. We're going off the question once again. The question doesn't say dinner with Jay Z and get mentored. It says. What would you rather have? Dinner with Jay-Z or 500 k Now, if you said dinner with Jay-Z, not only are you a, the biggest goofball in the fucking world, but, but you just proved my whole fucking point on why not, some of y'all never be millionaires. If you got $500,000, bro, and you have the entrepreneurial mind that you claim to have, that's why you're so qualified to sit down with Jay-Z and get his game plan and go do something with it, then you could just get that 500 bands and turn that into a million. Fuck you need Jay-Z for. You already know. You, well, well he, he go, I'm gonna give you a, yo, I'm gonna give you a dope stock, son. I'm gonna give you this. I'm gonna give you, he don't give a fuck. We're going by the question. He, and this is how I know. Look, I, I've been proven pretty much right, but I'm gonna keep the argument for argument's sake. I'm, I'm gonna play devil's advocate. Let's say you do sit down with Jay-Z. He runs you his whole battle plan. He tells you, like, this is what you need to do. You need to have this. You need to have that. You need to have this. This is where you put your money at. This is how you do the tax thing and shelters for your cash. You, he gives you everything. Okay, now you need capital. How are you going to put all this shit into play? I guarantee that most of the things and the moves that he's done is already out there as information for you to find for yourself. I'm pretty sure you could go Google it and read books and find out everything that he would tell you right off the top of his head. Okay? Keep that in mind. So, now that he gives you all this game, what the fuck are you going to do with it? Jay-Z didn't start off broke. Jay-Z had money. He had money before he was rapping. 
So you, so he he already had money to invest. He had money to throw at something to see if it'll work. It wasn't he just fucking one day came on the scene and I'm fucking I got money because I know the secrets and I'm I, I I got a record label and I turned that money into this. Nah, he had money before that. He did make a record label, a successful record label, and then he turned that money into other things, other investments, other whatever you name it. So, like I said, you got all the game from Jay-Z. What the fuck are you going to do now? Nothing. It's your dumb ass. People talking about, like, so many people chiming in. Oh, well, you, the 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 the, the information is invaluable to give. Yeah, but you half you motherfuckers don't got 500K to begin with. So what the fuck you going to do? Everybody looking for the fucking easy way out. Everybody looking for the quick fix. It's like, nah, bro. Jay-Z ain't going to just sit you down one day, tell you everything, and all of a sudden, boom, you got it. No, that's not how it goes. Jay-Z has a team. That motherfucker didn't go to school for business. Does that mean he doesn't know how to do business? No, but look how long he's been doing business for him to get to that point. You dig what I'm saying? So all that, oh, you know what I'm saying? Dinner with Jay-Z, to me, that's the most idiotic, idiot fucking asinine shit I've heard all fucking year. That's going for the dumbass of the year shit because I can't believe that anybody would pass up $500,000 to have dinner with Jay-Z. Even if you brought a fucking tape recorder and recorded every fucking word he said, you still wouldn't be able to do nothing with it. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're already somebody that's well off and got a lot of money and got some capital, maybe, you know, dinner with, you already got money and you got investments and you doing well for yourself. Maybe dinner with Jay-Z might help you. It might. But the thing of the matter is, is that we're going by the question. The question didn't say, hey, dinner with Jay-Z, you could ask him anything. The motherfucker could sit there and look at you and be like, eat your goddamn food. Sip your soup, eat your salad and, and we out of here, son. You feel me? So... We're going by the question, you know, and people got to understand that. That's why a lot of motherfuckers get, get got over on, get hustled and scammed out of the shit because you make something more than what it is. You know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of y'all don't get pussy. You think because if you do this for a girl, you do that for a girl, she's supposed to give you pussy. No, that's not how it works, bro. She gives you pussy if she wants to give you pussy. That's why the motherfuckers that be spending all this grip on shit and being flashy to get bitches. Now, if you do it, just do it. Hey, get your stunt on. I ain't, I ain't even mad at you. But if you do it just to get bitches, if you're doing it specifically only because you're trying to get hoes, just know that the motherfucker with the creased up black Air Force Ones are hitting that just like the, the guy with the Louis on. Okay? Because at the end of the day, the money don't make you. Anybody that has money or had money before will let you know that. What does it do? Money opens doors. Money provides opportunities. Money keeps you, um, you know, healthy. That's, in my opinion, it keeps you healthy. But it could also destroy you. See, because when you start thinking that the money makes you, that the money is the reason why um, uh, people should like you, the money is the reason why people should fuck with you. Then that's when you're, you're you got the game fucked up. I'm sorry, you got the game fucked up. People should respect you and want to fuck with you with or without money. If you think that having money makes you important, it doesn't. Does it make you have a lot of responsibilities? Yeah, it does. Does it matter? Yeah, fuck yeah, money matters. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Money matters, and it's very important to have it because that's the kind of society we live in. But if you feel like people should treat you better than other people because you got money, or if you feel like because you got money that you are, in fact, of a better or a different grade of people, then, you know, that's where you got the game fucked up, like I said. Money shouldn't make you. Money can't make you. If money made you, then money could fucking also take you. You dig what I'm saying? I've had money before. Lots of it. And I've also been broke. And one thing that it didn't take was my self-respect, 
my dignity, my my the the respect that I'm viewed at from my peers and people that I know, my family members, because I was respected the same with or without the money, before the money, after the money, during the money. I was respected. I was loved. You know, I was feared with or without money if I was feared. See, the money don't make you. The money's a fake shield. It's good to have it. Don't get me wrong. I'm first to tell you right now. But the money doesn't make you. And if you think that Jay-Z is going to fucking sit down with you and turn you into a millionaire overnight, then you got the whole game fucked up. And like I said, I could see a lot of why a lot of you motherfuckers will never be millionaires. You know what I mean? Some why some of y'all never be fucking millionaires, yo. Because of that. Because you thought that you really thought that Jay-Z sitting down and him giving you some game is gonna change your fucking life. It might change your life, but it ain't gonna fucking it, it ain't gonna produce five hundred thousand. You can't walk up into the bank and be like, yo, I sat down with Jay-Z. Jay-Z knows my my first fucking name. I need a loan. They ain't, they gonna look at you and laugh their whole fucking head off all the way the fuck out. They're going to go home and tell their wife about the stupid motherfucker that came into the bank and really tried to get a loan based off Jay-Z's name. That's what they're going to do. So uh, the main topic, $500,000 or dinner with Jay-Z, the fact that that's even a debate, it, 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 it kind of hurts my feelings, y'all. Not for me, because I'm a very compassionate person. But for all you dumb motherfuckers that would actually take the sit down with Jay-Z over that. And I told you, like I said, I kind of have proof that of what I'm saying is correct. Because we all know Jay-Z owns title. Now, I'm not saying he's the one firing off these, tw these tweets. But I'm pretty sure when it comes to uh, tweets from the official title uh, inst uh, Twitter account... I'm pretty sure he has kind of some some say so on it, or at least someone that 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 he knows that knows what the fuck they're doing. They obviously been in put in that position to to make sure that they're responsible. And basically, they fired off a tweet because the shit was trending. Obviously, the whole Jay Z debate was trending. They fired off a tweet and says, "Take, take it said take the money, y'all. There you have it. Take the fucking money. Now it, it may not have been Jay Z." But it's a part of Jay-Z's machine. So I can't say for sure, but I'm pretty damn sure he would have roasted you if you would have pulled up to have a sit-down dinner with him and you told him that you passed up $500,000 to be there. He would have roasted the fuck out of you. He would have went home, laid his head on his Versace pillows, you know what I'm saying? Kicked his feet up. Kicked his Gucci slippers up on the motherfucking Italian marble. Looked at Bay and be like, yo, yo, Beyonce, I can't believe this shit. These motherfuckers really think, man, that I was going to give him some money just by telling him some shit. And Bay would have looked at him and be like, shut your motherfucking goat face camel looking ass so eh, whatever I can't believe she's with that motherfucker and I'm not saying that out of hate it's just that she's so goddamn fine and he looks like the guy on the camel cigarettes pack and it just mind boggles to me it was mind boggling to me anyways look it's the no invite podcast we're gonna keep it short and sweet like I said it's me by myself so I don't want to be on my rant but you could go ahead and follow us on Instagram at no underscore invite underscore podcast. You could also go to any of our, um, you could go to any podcasting streaming platform and find us there. Just look up no invite podcast. You could also go to our uh, YouTube channel. That's Rebirth Media Films. That's R-I-B-I-R-T-H Media Films with a Z. And you could look up all the latest episodes. Please subscribe. Please write a review and a rate, leave a rating when you guys do on any of your favorite uh, podcasting sites. It helps us a lot. It helps us move down the list. Uh, I don't ask you guys for shit, but I will ask you for that because it's very important. It helps us rank and helps other people find this wonderful fucking podcast so that we could all fucking get along and do what the fuck we came to do. I'm Blaze. You're you. Have a wonderful night.